So REST APIs are really cool because you can do all these functions here programmatically. So this will save you a lot of time. But isn't there a better way in order to execute these functions and to know what kind of REST call it's needed? Well, there is. Now, with a large language model, you can create your own API encoder system, which will basically combine documentation and code generation in one. You just type in here what kind of REST API call or code you would like to have and the API assistant is giving you the documentation as well as a full working code. And how it is, I will show you now. Keep on watching. You might be familiar with the Cisco Catalyst Center, which was formerly called Cisco DNA Center. With this platform, you can manage your whole network. For example, you have access to all your devices, access point, catalyst switches, and uh, routers. And of course, this platform supports a REST API. So let's actually go straight into the demo and let's see how the Catalyst Center API encoder system will help you. So um, I'm not here the first time, I already imported the data, more to that later on, and let's just test it. So I have prepared some examples and I will just run, just run this query here. Get me a list of all end of sales devices, include the authentication. End of sales devices means what kind of uh, uh, devices are still in, sold by Cisco. And this is important, of course, to know. And there is actually an API for that. So without looking into the documentation, you can see here the query path, REST operation, and here we go, a fully functioning uh, script where you actually see with the requested token and with the request of this specific uh, API path, we will actually receive the end of sales data. I have prepared also some other examples where also some Python script was already executed. So you can find this also in the GitHub repository. An example two is for example here to export a summary of all the clients. So following this query, the LM will give us this output here. And this output is a generated Python script, which again gives us the following output here. So you see here that all the device count and wireless or wired, you can see here the health status of the client. And this is actually real data from the Cisco Catalyst sandbox, which you can use by the way. And I've also prepared a third example. In this third example, the user queries as follows. Get me a list of all devices and export this list as a spreadsheet locally. Include the authentication function. And without again looking into the documentation, I actually received the documentation and a functioning Python script. I just type in username and password and of course my IP address of the Cisco DNA Center or Cisco Catalyst Center. And then after execution of this Python script, I get an Excel spreadsheet. And here is the results of this Excel spreadsheet. I actually get all the results there. So basically without anything looking up into the documentation, without anything specific coding skills, I just type in these parameters and I get and I receive a spreadsheet which I would like to have. So this will definitely save you a lot of time. I also input some other examples. So let's just try this one here. Run the steal I show command of one specific device. In this case, um, the assistant is asking and using the LM of OpenAI. This is GPT 3.5 Turbo. So you can see here the API documentation to this API REST uh, query. So network device policy CLI read request, which is totally correct because run read only commands on networking devices. This is the REST, uh, REST call for that. And now let's dive a bit deeper into the Python code and see how intelligent this LM is actually. So you see that we actually need to create with a username and password with the basic authentication, a token. And this is, this is like regular uh, procedure, how you actually use the REST API with Catalyst Center. But now let's look further. We use this token to execute this command, this post command, which network device policy I read request. And in this payload is already show version. So basically the, the, the parameter, what we defined here up there. We wanted to execute show version command and it already did that here. And now this will actually create a task 
inside of Catalyst Center. So you not immediately get the show version command back of the platform of Catalyst Center because it first needs to ask the switch basically the show command. And look how this LM created the Python script. With this response, I get a task ID back. And I wait 10 seconds so that this task can be executed. And after 10 seconds, I ask with another API call, intent API version 1 task, I actually ask, hey, give me the response, the progress, or give me the output of the show command. And here we go. And this is the output. So as you can see here, it actually takes the whole LM, takes three logic steps, getting the token, setting up the read request, and then getting the result of the task to the output here. And this is all done with just writing this one line here, run a CLI show co a command show version directly on one specific device, include authentication, and voila. I hope you are excited as I am because this is really cool and this can create a lot of other use cases and will save you a lot of time. So I hope you ask yourself now how you did it. That's really cool. This is a so-called RAG architecture, retrieval augmented generation. And it's very efficient because it's very cost effective and you can use your own local private data. I used on the left side, you can see here, I used uh, a data layer with Catalyst Center user guide, API documentation, and the open API specification. I put all of this data into a vector database, ChromaDB. Then I have, of course, like a front and back end, which uh, I used Chainlit for that, the Python library. So the user can actually chat with the Chainlit library with the large language model. And now let's go more into detail on how all of this works. In order to understand the RAG architecture, I think the most crucial thing before I go over this, this whole diagram or process is this one here, ask LLM. So the user query and context information is put here. So what it does is actually, when you ask the LLM in a RAG context, you have the user query, original user query from the user, and the context information which you retrieved from the Chroma database. And the search query is based on the user query. So this is this, the, the same. Let's go into the code because this is very important. So here we are at the uh, function ask LM. And what it does is actually creates, it creates the whole input. What is the input of the LM? So first here are the two functions where I get two times the query, the database. So one is for the API docs and the other query is for the API specification. And then I put here uh, the information, what I received from the vector database into this XML text. This is by choice. So we have here the context information. This is from the uh, API documentation and information from the I specification. Uh, I did this because I got better results that way. So I actually am doing two queries here. And finally, there is the question of the user, the query string. So this is actually the input of the role user. And this is the prompt of the system. I will show you here like how this whole output looks like. So here's an example. First of all, the LM knows about the system prompt. So it knows, okay, what it is. Uh, here you are at the REST API and Python coder system and so on. And then the LM is getting context information delimited with XML text. So here, and this is the context in doc document from the, from the vector database. And it also receives the API specification, which is also delimited with XML text. Like I said, I'm doing two queries here because I got way better results um, because I definitely wanted to include in every semantic search, I will come to that later, um, the API specification. And finally, this is the user question here with the input. Get me a list of all end of sales devices, include authentication, the example, what we did before. Now let's go back here to the inferencing part and the RAG architecture. So let's start here on the right side. The user is asking for API assistance. So as we did before, we are actually, or this user is typing in and wants to uh, have the output of the LM. Here's the example, get a list of all network devices. So please create me a Python script or the, the right uh, REST query for, uh, for this task. So here we go, user is querying it into the Python app. The Python app is then 
vectorizing this specific user query. Why is this important? Because in the ChromaDB, vectors are stored. So all the context information, what you, you saw in the, in the documents, is actually stored as vectors. And why does it do it? Because this is the best way to do a semantic search. Semantic search is actually searching for the specific documents, which are stored in the Chroma database, which is similar, semantically similar, to the user query. Please give me only the similar documents or documents which are relevant to this user query. ChromaDB is then doing the semantic search, getting a number, you can define it, 10, 15, 5 documents, and then getting back the context information or the, the document information to the Python application. And here we go, like we, you don't receive basically the uh, vectors, you are actually receiving the original document chunk. And then the LM will get user query and all this context information which has been retrieved by the Chroma database. And then here we are, here is the large language model. So either you can use simple REST APIs to ask OpenAI GPT, or you can use, for example, local service as Olama, for example, what, what I did in the example here, and query Llama 3 or other open source models. And these open source models, they're running on your laptop, they're running in your lab, like wherever you would like. And finally, the LLM is basically outputting the documentation and the Python code, what you have seen before uh, in the example. And this is the whole process on how inferencing is done in a RAG architecture. Now that we know how the vector database is being used at inferencing, let's see how the data is actually imported into the vector database. I've prepared three examples here. So first is the user guide. The user guide is a 900 pages PDF file. And these 900 pages can't be imported at once in the context window. As you can see here, this would be the whole input to the LLM. And here are the various documents. But we are not importing like a 900 pages document into, into the LLM. Why? Because there is a context window. There is a token limitation. Here you can see what is actually the context window. So the context window is the input prompt and the output prompt together. So you can see here in the input prompt, we have here the user input, context document one, two, three, four, and so on, as much as basically the context window allows. But we also need to calculate and check that actually the output it needs also to be in this specific context window. And this context window is actually written in the documentation of the LM. So if we go to the do documentation of GPT 3.5 Turbo, for example, we see here that the context window is about 16,000 tokens. No worries, uh, of course, they increase the token size a lot. Before it was 4,000 and so on, and now with GPT-4, the, uh, the token window, the context window, supports 128,000 tokens there. Now you might be wondering, okay, what is a token exactly? So OpenAI has here this specific web application, the tokenizer, where you can visualize actually the tokens. So let's just copy and paste here um, one example here, one just sample text here of the Cisco Catalyst Center platform. Then we go here to the tokenizer and then we input it. And as you can see here, the tokens are 288. The characters were over 1,500. So this tokenizer gives you a visualization of how GPT 3.5 is actually calculating or generating these specific tokens. So you can see here that Cisco is one token, then Space Catalyst is one token, Space Center is one token. To sum it up, as you can see here, we can't put a 900 pages document into this context window because it would be too big for this context window. So what do we do? We are actually chunking these documents so that you can give the LM only the needed documentation or the needed information, context information, which is relevant to the user query. After we've chunked this document, they will be embedded. So this is an embedding function where you basically put all these tokens, what we have seen here in the platform here, they will be put into a vector. 
And these vectors will be stored into the ChromaDB database, into the vector database. Let's go to the next example, because here we are scraping API documentation, which is written in HTML, from the website into our Python script. So here, for example, we are scraping all these specific guides uh, into the Python script and then uh, chunk it and then put it into the vector database here. The third example is the API specification. Let's go through this. This is the API specification. As you can see here, everything is written as per uh, the specification. So here we have for each path specific operations. We have a specific, uh, specific summary, description, and of course, there's specific parameters there. So if we check this path here, you can see here that the summary and the description is not a lot. So we have here just add members to the tag, add members to the tag specif specified by ID, but I thought that, and based on my testing, that we need to extend this specific information, especially with uh, background information from the user guide, from the web documentation, and also create some use cases there, which the user might ask in the user query. And this is why the process is as follows. At first, the API specification is extracted, so as we saw before per path, and then new information is being created based on the user guide and based on the API documentation, of course, with the large language model here. Basically, the API specification is extended and the extended information are directly put into the GromaDB. And of course, before that, again, the data will be chunked and then vectorized and then finally inserted into the vector database. But this can take a while because it's about 500 operations you need to do and you need to create there. And this is why I already inserted my output uh, in the data folder. So you can see here that here in the extended API specs documentation, I created already all the, this extended API query information with GPT 3.5 Turbo. And I have to say, because I extended this API specification with use cases, with an extended description, I got way better results when I was chatting with the LM. I would invite you to try out the different parameters there. For example, you can use different chunking methods. I used the really just the basic one with a character splitting. You can add other relevant data. You can extend and change the system prompt. You can include, of course, the response schemas from the open API specifications. So there are so many ways where you can actually tweak even more uh, this API assistant so that it will get or give you better results there. Also a common question might be, should I use OpenAI or Olama or an open source model? So in my experience, OpenAI, especially with GPT 3.5 Turbo, got me really good results. Compared to Llama 3 with 8 billion parameters, uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo was, uh, I would say, better. But feel free to try out, feel free to tweak the code and everything, because this is what it's all about, right? Like to really to learn there and definitely put your key learnings right in the comments or just write it on GitHub. With that, I wish you all the best. Have fun with this project. I really hope it will save you time. Happy learning. All the best. Bye.